Alright guys, I am back with a video to give my thoughts on what's been going on in WWE. And I really haven't been watching the show at all. The last time I watched WWE was back in August. And I've heard bits and pieces about some things here and there. Um, I heard that Joey Mercury and Jamie Noble were now stooges to Seth Rollins. And I've heard some things like that. But I haven't really been watching the show. It's not a priority of mine. Um, I've been busy with school and other things. And when I do have free time, it's usually a small window, like today. Um, I have a little bit of time here to make this video. And I just I don't want to spend my time watching something that I no longer enjoy. And WWE has just been making bad decision after bad decision, in my opinion. And the only theory I can come up with is that they are trying to drive away old wrestling fans like myself and bring in new people who all they know is the current brand of WWE. That's the only thing I can come up with for the reason behind some of these decisions. Um, wrestling as a whole, though, hasn't really been doing anything for me for a long time now. I haven't watched WWE since August. It's been even longer since I watched TNA. I haven't watched Ring of Honor since May. Um, but as far as WWE, I know the reason I stopped watching that. And it was the second Raw after SummerSlam. So, you had Brock Lesnar versus John Cena at SummerSlam. Brock killed him. It was new. It was original. It was shocking. People were talking about it. Then the following week on Raw, I can't remember what happened, but Cena wasn't there. Then, Cena came back, and to send a message to Brock Lesnar, he destroyed the Wyatt family. Just completely destroyed them. And I don't understand the point in that. Um, for me, that was the final nail in the coffin of the Wyatt family. They are just jokes at this point. And then I hear that Luke Harper left the group recently, and they already broke him up. It's like, what are they thinking with that stuff? Um, then you have the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view, where it was Orton versus Cena... I mean, I don't want to say that I take delight in the WWE Network doing bad numbers. I don't want to say that, but I do think this company should be humbled. Because any other business um, listens to what the people want, except for the wrestling business. And in particular, WWE. It's like they are just so... I don't even know the word I'm thinking of. They just they have to go against the grain of what the people want. And it's to a ridiculous, absurd level. It's the epitome of stupidity. Um, it's just, I can't even believe it. And for me, I do not feel I'm missing out on anything. Whenever I talk to someone about wrestling and they tell me what's been going on recently, it's never anything good. It's never like, oh man, that show was great, that was an awesome pay-per-view. It's always bad. And if anything, it's getting worse. So WWE only has themselves to blame for this. Um, they had a great shot with CM Punk when he did his work shoot promo or whatever. Um, they could have really made a new Steve Austin type of character. People were talking about it. They failed. Um, now you got Dean Ambrose, who is also kind of Steve Austin-ish. He's the rebel, the outlaw, the anti-hero. Um, so they crush his head on some cinder blocks and take him off of television to go film a movie no one will watch. And he was really getting over, too. Um, so I have no doubt in my mind that they will fail with Dean Ambrose as well. Um, I just I have no faith in this company, and honestly, I don't even care anymore. I had plans to go to WrestleMania 31. My sister lives in California. I could easily go out there, go to WrestleMania 31. It's not like a huge stretch for me to travel there. Um, and I don't want to waste the money. There's just nothing I want to see. I'm still going to go to California, but I'm going to do other things that I actually enjoy while I'm out there. Um, not waste money to watch WrestleMania 31. There's nothing that interests me about it, and I know it's really early, but still, there's really nothing they could do that would interest me. I've heard things about Triple H versus The Rock, something with Rusev, and to be honest, Rusev has been pretty stale for me personally for a long time now. Um, every Raw and SmackDown, it was the same thing. I lost interest in Rusev a while back. Um, so that doesn't interest me. Uh, honestly, I don't even fast forward through the shows when I record them on my DVR. I just straight up delete them. 
and eventually I won't record them at all. <laughs> and recently, it was a Monday night, I think maybe three weeks ago, I was going through the channels and I saw Raw was on, so I clicked to watch it, and it was Los Matadores versus Slater and Gator with the little bull facing Hornswoggle in an alligator costume. That was all the confirmation I needed that I was making the right choice and no longer watching this garbage. And WWE clearly doesn't care if I watch or not. Um, so, yeah, I guess, uh, needless to say, I won't be getting the network. <laughs> but I also feel I should mention a little bit about TNA. Um, recently, I can't remember when, probably the same time, maybe three, four weeks back, I was watching some TNA on television. And just one, one little segment, it was Bobby Roode in the ring. He was talking to MVP. He wanted a title shot against Lashley, and Lashley said he would have to face him and Kenny King in a handicap match to, uh, to get a shot at Lashley. So, for me, this was one of the saddest things. <laughs> if you watch TNA now, that they've lost the television deal, and just the, everything about it, the presentation, it is so sad, man. Um, you got Bobby Roode out there trying, and you know that these guys, they know the writing is on the wall. This is it. But what's really sad about this is this is pretty much the last shot for a lot of these guys. They're a lot older now. Um, they've pretty much given their wrestling careers to TNA, which in itself is sad. But WWE isn't interested. They're a lot older, and they know that this is pretty much the end of their wrestling careers once TNA's done for, which is probably going to be very soon. Um, at least as far as national television is concerned. I know a lot of them could go work on the indies, but you have guys like Bad Influence with Christopher Daniels and AJ Styles who have been in Ring of Honor previously. They kind of have an open door there. Um, a lot of these guys don't have that, so I don't know if they're going to be given the same opportunities as these other guys. Uh, but who knows? I mean, they de even if they get to Ring of Honor, it's not going to be national television. The pay, the pay may actually be the same, to be honest with you. <laughs> but it's it's still really sad, and I mean, there's so much talent in TNA. It's just it's like, ah, oh, what are you guys thinking? I don't know, man. It's just wrestling as a whole. I just want to walk away from a lot of it. But, yeah, um, WWE, I can't think of anything that they could do that would get me to watch the show. Um, maybe Sting. I think I would tune in for Sting, and I would literally watch his segment and then delete the program. Nothing else. I wouldn't watch anything else. I honestly just don't care. I'm too busy with other things. I enjoy doing other things. And this is just not entertaining. It's, it's like, pathetic. And if you still get enjoyment from it and like watching it, more power to you. But for me personally, it's not for me anymore. Um, however, since it's been a long time since I've watched Raw, I am going to watch this week's and do a, I guess, kind of a live review. Just give my thoughts as I watch it, at least as live as I can make it. Um, so I don't know what's been happening. I'm just going to watch the show and give you guys my thoughts. Um, I'm not very excited about this, but we'll see how it goes. Alright, so Seth Rollins is making his way to the ring with his stooges right now. And I just wanted to say something real quick. I was talking to a friend of mine recently. And we were talking about how this whole Dean Ambrose thing and what they're trying to do with Hell in a Cell with Cena and Orton. He's like, well, you know, a lot of stuff didn't go as planned. Daniel Bryan was hurt and uh, Roman Reigns was injured and so now they have to kind of fall back on some of these guys. That's still their fault. <laughs> they haven't made any new stars. This is not an excuse. This is still the company's fault for being idiots um, and not planning ahead. They've been doing the same crap to get by for so long now that they just got lazy and they continued to rely on guys like Cena and Orton and now they have no stars. You know, the last good thing I watched on Raw was the Hulk Hogan birthday party. How sad is that? When you had Hulk Hogan out there and they brought the NWO and then Hogan swerved everyone and turned heel joining the NWO and you had Paul Orndorff out there trying to give someone a mustache ride on the outside. That was good. That was funny stuff. 
So Seth Rollins is out here talking about how he's going to defeat Cena tonight. He's done with Ambrose. He's moving on to John Cena. And Randy Orton comes out. He's angry. He's wearing his baby blue t-shirt. And he turns babyface, I guess. He gets in the face of Triple H, and he tries to attack Rollins. He hits the RKO on Rollins, and um, the fans cheer, and that was pretty much it. Uh, Randy Orton is at least bearable as a heel, so of course WWE is going to turn him babyface again. At least I guess they can get some merchandise money out of the guy again. But uh, yeah, this is terrible, I think, for pretty much everyone involved. Because you're going to have Orton, who's going to get another push as a babyface. And Rollins is going to become fodder for that. Um, after he becomes fodder for Cena here tonight, I'm sure. It's Mark Henry and Big Show versus Stardust and Gold Dust. <laughs> Big Show's got some other makeup stuck to the back of his head. He looks like a, a huge bowling ball. But Mark Henry turns on the Big Show. He hits the world's strongest slam on him. And, uh... Yeah, I mean, that was amazing. I don't think anything else on this show is going to top that. Actually, that's probably true, sadly. But um, we're going to get another big show Mark Henry feud. I mean, if that hasn't got you excited, I don't know what will. Uh, so, yeah, I just I can't believe that the writers are that lazy. Like, they're seriously so lazy. The only thing they can come up with is another Mark Henry versus Big Show feud. So they do an interview, a very, very short interview with Roman Reigns via satellite. And he says he's going to come back and take out Seth Rollins. So now Rollins is going to become fodder for Roman Reigns as well. And I don't really care for Roman Reigns. A guy like Ambrose I could get behind, the anti-hero. Um, someone like Roman Reigns I just I don't really care that much about. Um, I think he's kind of boring. He's not really exciting. He's very predictable. The typical baby face they're trying to bring up. And that's pretty bad considering he's like their next big star that they want to push. Um, so yeah, that's just bad news for me, I guess, because I'm not a big fan of Roman Reigns. But like I stated earlier, I'm not going to watch this crap anyway, so I don't care. Then AJ Lee faces Alicia Fox. Paige was at ringside. Paige ends up costing Alicia Fox the match because she's upset that she's not beating AJ. So she makes her lose. Um, Paige was great here. I really liked her, but everything else was pretty boring. After the match, um, Paige offers Alicia Fox a bracelet to kind of make up for what she did. And Alicia takes it, and then Paige turns on her and beats the crap out of her. The entire time, Alicia Fox is still holding on to that bracelet, though, including a slingshot spot. She's still holding on to the bracelet. So Cena comes out, and I wanted to go ahead and pause this after his initial thing before Stephanie comes out and says whatever she's going to say. Um, something Cena said reminded me of something I had heard a while ago, and I can't remember who said it. But he's talking about Brock Lesnar, and apparently he's getting another title shot. And how Brock Lesnar's never here. And, first of all, that's completely played out. We've heard that so many times with The Rock and every other guy who comes back. Batista, now Brock Lesnar. Um, but they've been saying about that about Brock for a long time now. And it really exposes things, because it's basically saying the company shouldn't have given you the belt. Like, this is all BS, and we know the titles are just given to someone. No one actually wins these championships. It's all just wh whoever the company decides. Um, and they shouldn't have picked you because you're never here and I'm always here. That's basically the argument. And that's pathetic. I can't believe I'm only an hour and 15 minutes <laughs> into the show. I am really trying hard not to fast forward through some of this crap. So Stephanie tries to convince Cena to join the authority, and he refuses. This guy is just, he's too much. <laughs> Cena is too much. And that's an understatement. It's like when Larry David said on an episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm, he says, Hitler, he thought the Jews were a bit much. <laughs> this is just, oh, this guy. Hey, Cena, can you demonstrate a Russian leg sweep? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. No, John, John, 
a Russian leg sweep. <laughs> That's from the um, training video or whatever he did before he debuted. But um, yeah, so he refuses. Triple H comes out and says the Survivor Series is going to be Team Authority versus Team Cena. It's Miz and Damian Mizdow versus the Usos. <laughs> this is awesome. So Damian Mizdow is on the apron and he's doing every single thing the Miz is doing, including selling. So sadly, Miz and Mizdow lose to the Usos after the Usos use Twin Magic, which has probably been happening since the beginning of wrestling. I remember watching the Body Donnas use that back in the mid 90s. Um, but I have no problems with this. I thought this was very entertaining, um, including the reactions after they lost. This was just great stuff. And this is clearly never going to be more than a comedy act. So for something like this, they don't really need to win. If anyone knows where I can get an NXT Bo Dallas shirt, let me know in the comments or send me a message on Facebook because I couldn't find them on eBay or on the WWE shop site. So I have no idea how you can get one anymore, but I'd like to have one. That would be the only piece of WWE merchandise I actually own. But it's Bo Dallas versus Ryback. And Ryback is back to his old feed me more gimmick. Um, he was really over here, and he just completely squashes Bo Dallas. Um, so for me, this was kind of weird because when Ryback debuted, he was facing guys like Jinder Mahal, and they were getting offense in on him. And now he's facing Bo Dallas and just straight up squashing the guy like nothing. I mean, no offense. And this is what they should have done with Ryback when he debuted, is make him a monster who just goes through guys, they get no offense in on him at all. Um, but at the same time, it's like, well, Bo Dallas, I mean, isn't there someone lower on the totem pole they could do this with? So it's kind of like, what do you want? Do you want them to push Ryback properly and have him squash these guys? Or do you want them to elevate someone like Bo Dallas? So it's kind of a, a tough situation here. Hulk Hogan comes out and he's putting over Cena. He talks about the breast cancer stuff and it's it is what it is. I mean it's for a good cause. It was it was fine I guess. Um, then it's Ambrose versus Cesaro or it's supposed to be I actually thought this might be a good match. I don't know what I was thinking. So Ambrose just snaps and attacks Cesaro, and then he calls out Bray Wyatt, and Bray Wyatt comes in the Titan Tron, and he uh, he says some stuff. Bray Wyatt's creepy. And that was about it. I thought this was disappointing. Um, Cesaro is another guy where you just think, what happened? This guy had everything. I do wish he was still walking to the ring like this, but, <laughs> I mean, he's just one of those guys where it's like Cena was putting him over at that live show in Germany or whatever, and everybody was talking about how great he is, and now he's just nothing. And everybody's all excited at NXT, and they got all these new up-and-coming stars. You mean guys like Bo Dallas? Guys like Bray Wyatt? This is what they do to these guys. Cesaro? And... I like Kevin Steen. I do. I'm a big fan of Kevin Steen's. What are they going to do with Kevin Steen character-wise? Do you actually think they're going to do something good with Kevin Steen? Do you actually see Orton and Cena losing to a Sami Zayn? Losing to a Kevin Steen? Losing to an Adrian Neville? It's not going to happen. They have their established stars, and the only guy they're trying to elevate to that level is Roman Reigns. And he would just run through those guys just like Orton and Cena would. So it's really nothing to get excited about. Nikki Bella beats Naomi with help from Brie Bella, who is forced to be her assistant. It's something for them to do, I guess, but it's just not very entertaining. Then it's Dolph Ziggler versus Kane in a match that felt like it lasted forever. Dolph eventually beats him, then Seth Rollins runs out attacks Dolph, they beat him up, Cena runs out and makes the save. It's finally over. You know, I actually look forward to the commercials because it means I can fast forward and get through this crap faster. But it's finally over. It's Cena versus Rollins. 
Cena gets him in the STF. Kane interferes. Rollins and Kane are beating up Cena. Dolph runs out to make the save. The Stooges get involved. They're beating down Cena and Dolph. Then all the wrestlers run out. Why? And then they just start fighting. And then Cena hits the AA on Heath Slater and Bo Dallas. And that was the end of the show. Man, I picked <laughs> a bad Raw to finally do another Raw review on. Because nothing happened here. This was a very boring show. Um, <laughs> yeah, this just... I mean, there was nothing here. This was just not entertaining. Total waste of time. But um, in closing, WWE continues to pollute the wrestling landscape with their brand of whatever. And they don't just turn people off of their show... They turn people off of pro wrestling in general. I mean, people just don't watch wrestling like they used to. Um, when WWE does badly, a lot of other companies tend to do badly. And it's just, uh, it's not surprising to me. For me personally, my decision to stop watching is I just was no longer enjoying the product. And this had been building up for me for a while, back when Bray Wyatt was feuding with Cena. That's when it kind of started with me. Um, and then it was just more and more crap, and then you have the launch of the network, and the pay-per-views have just been pretty bad ever since then. Um, just a lot of stuff. And I know people come on YouTube and they say, all oh, these fans, they talk about how much they hate it, but they're not going to stop watching. No, I did stop watching, and I have no desire after watching this to start watching again. And I'm sure there are a lot of other people out there like me who just completely stop watching and go do other things or watch other things. Um, there's just other stuff to enjoy besides this. And to me, this company is so arrogant. It's like they don't get that. We don't have to watch this trash. Um, if WWE is the only wrestling company left, then we just won't watch wrestling. Period. Um, and I have no problems with that. Whatever. I know I was lucky enough to live through probably the greatest era that will ever exist in wrestling. The Attitude Era. I got to see that. I'm good. <laughs> I know it's never going to be that again. So it's like, okay, every once in a while I'll get something good. But it's never going to be like it was then. So I really don't care. Um, but yeah, I mean, WWE, this arrogance and cockiness that they're just going to take whatever we give them, put on bad pay-per-views, they got to pay for this, man. I know a lot of people who are diehard fans are not resubscribing to the network, and they're going to feel it. It's going to happen, and it's their own fault. They've been arrogant for far too long, and it's time that they pay for it. And it's going to hit them in the pocketbook, big time. Um, but anyways... Those are my thoughts on WWE and this lackluster Raw. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Um, I'm not sure when I'll do another one. Maybe if there's a Raw and people are sending me messages or um, sending me messages on Facebook or something like that saying, hey, this one was really good or this happened, uh, you should definitely check it out. Maybe then I'll be able to watch another one. Um, it's not just that, it's also the fact that I have a lot of time issues. It's hard for me to get time to do all this stuff. Um, but, yeah, I mean, <laughs> who would want to take time to watch this when I do have free time? I mean, that's just ridiculous. Why would I do that to myself? And honestly, if I wasn't making YouTube videos, I probably would have quit watching a lot sooner. I definitely would have quit watching TNA a lot sooner. Um, so anyways, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Leave your thoughts in the comments, and thanks for watching. Bye. Alright guys, I am back with a video to give my thoughts on what's been going on in WWE. And I really haven't been watching the show at all. The last time I watched WWE was back in August. And I've heard bits and pieces about some things here and there. Um... I heard that Joey Mercury and Jamie Noble were now stooges to Seth Rollins, and I've heard some things like that, but I haven't really been watching the show. It's not a priority of mine. Um, I've been busy with school and other things, and when I do have free time, it's usually a small window, like today. 
Um, I have a little bit of time here to make this video and I just I don't want to spend my time watching something that I no longer enjoy. And WWE has just been making bad decision after bad decision in my opinion. And the only theory I can come up with is that they are trying to drive away old wrestling fans like myself and bring in new people who all they know is the current brand of WWE. That's the only thing I can come up with for the reason behind some of these decisions. Um, wrestling as a whole, though, hasn't really been doing anything for me for a long time now. I haven't watched WWE since August. It's been even longer since I watched TNA. I haven't watched Ring of Honor since May. Um, but as far as WWE, I know the reason I stopped watching that. And it was the second Raw after SummerSlam. So, you had Brock Lesnar versus John Cena at SummerSlam. Brock killed him. It was new. It was original. It was shocking. People were talking about it. Then the following week on Raw, I can't remember what happened, but Cena wasn't there. Then, Cena came back, and to send a message to Brock Lesnar, he destroyed the Wyatt family. Just completely destroyed him. And I don't understand the point in that. Um, for me, that was the final nail in the coffin of the Wyatt family. They are just jokes at this point. And then I hear that Luke Harper left the group recently and they already broke him up. It's like, what are they thinking with that stuff? Um, then you have the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view where it was Orton versus Cena. I mean, I don't want to say that I take delight in the WWE Network doing bad numbers. I don't want to say that, but I do think this company should be humbled. Because any other business um, listens to what the people want, except for the rest. Um, now you got Dean Ambrose, who is also kind of Steve Austin-ish. He's the rebel, the outlaw, the anti-hero. Um, so they crush his head on some cinder blocks and take him off of television to go film a movie no one will watch. And he was really getting over, too. Um, so I have no doubt in my mind that they will fail with Dean Ambrose as well. Um, I just I have no faith in this company, and honestly, I don't even care anymore. I had plans to go to WrestleMania 31. My sister lives in California. I could easily go out there, go to WrestleMania 31. It's not like a huge stretch for me to travel there. Um, and I don't want to waste the money. There's just nothing I want to see. I'm still going to go to California, but I'm going to do other things that I actually enjoy while I'm out there. Um, not waste money to watch WrestleMania 31. There's nothing that interests me about it, and I know it's really early, but still, there's really nothing they could do to sling business, and in particular, WWE. It's like they are just so... I don't even know the word I'm thinking of. They just they have to go against the grain of what the people want, and it's to a ridiculous, absurd level. It's the epitome of stupidity. Um, it's just, I can't even believe it, and... For me, I do not feel I'm like missing out on anything. Whenever I talk to someone about wrestling and they tell me what's been going on recently, it's never anything good. It's never like, oh man, that show was great, that was an awesome pay-per-view. It's always bad. And if anything, it's getting worse. So WWE only has themselves to blame for this. Um, they had a great shot with CM Punk when he did his work shoot promo or whatever. Um, they could have really made a new Steve Austin type of character. People were talking about it. They failed.